Okay, in this video, we're gonna be doing Calc AB problem set number nine. Uh, there's a link to the problems in the description, and there's also a link to the playlist of all the problem sets. Um, all right, let's do this. So we're given two graphs, one of F, one of G, uh, and we wanna find, I apologize that they're so bright, but I'm just not gonna be able to take the time to fix that. Uh, find each of the following, d dx of f of g of x at x equals 1. So let's start with that. So we want to find the derivative f of g of x. So the derivative of f of something is going to be uh, f prime of that thing times the derivative of that thing. The derivative of g is g prime. We have to evaluate this at 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace every x that I see with a 1. So I think on these you want to like show a lot of steps. I show more steps than I think most students want to show. But it's just good because then when you make a mistake, you can kind of backtrack. So now I need to figure out what g of 1 is. Um, so g of 1 is definitely 2. I also need to know what g prime of 1 is. g prime of 1 is going to be the slope of that line segment. Um, so it goes up 2 and over 1. So the slope of that is going to be 2. Um, so let's plug those in. So we're doing f prime of g of 1 we said was 2. So f prime of 2, g prime of 1. g prime of 1 we know is 2. Uh, we need to know what f prime of 2 is. So I'm gonna go over to my graph of f, uh, find the slope of this line segment, which will tell us f prime of two. Uh, it's down five and over three, so negative five thirds, and then we just sub in the values. So don't be afraid of these types of problems. Uh, so first do it like notationally or whatever using the functions, um, then go to the graphs, find the values that you need and just substitute. I mean, it's not, it's not something to really worry about, but you know, unless you've done a bunch of them, it kind of is a little weird. All right, so we want to find h prime of 2 for h of x is f of x squared. Uh, so the derivative of f of something is going to be f prime of that thing. So f prime of x squared times the derivative of that thing, so times 2x. And now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take the 2 that we need to plug in, and we're going to replace every x with that 2. So h prime of 2 is going to be f prime of 4 times 4. I don't know, I apologize that all the numbers come up the same. That just seems to happen when I make up problems. It's very confusing, because it's like, now nah, you're not really sure what which four is what, and in the previous part there were like twos. It's like, it just happens. I don't know why. All right, we need to figure out the value of f prime of four. So we go there, the slope of the graph there is up four, <laughs> of course, and over one. So f prime of four is four, great. So we're just doing four times four, uh, which is 16. All right. The next one looks annoying. So we are gonna find uh, h prime of negative four for h of x equals f of x over two times g of two x plus six. All right, I kinda hate when there's a common, like when there's a number you could factor out. I don't have a solution to that because like, you know, it just happens, but two x plus six annoys me. Two times the quantity x plus three is even more annoying because it like introduces more parentheses, but let's do this. It is a product, so we're gonna need the product rule. First, so the first thing is going to be f of x over 2. The second thing is going to be g of 2x plus 6. So to find each of the derivatives, we'll need the chain rule. So I'm just going to do that as I go through. But h prime is going to be first. So f of x over 2 times the derivative of the second. So g prime of 2x plus 6 times the derivative of 2x plus 6, which is 2, plus second, g of 2x plus 6, times the derivative of the first, which will be f prime of x over 2, times 1 half. So the one half is the derivative of x over two. All right, now every x that we see is gonna be replaced with negative four. And I think it's important to show this step. I'm not gonna make you watch it, but it's gonna become f of negative two, g prime of negative two, because of course, uh, times two, plus g of negative two, f prime of negative two times one half. Now all we need, all we need to do is go to the graphs and find the values that we need. Um, so we need to know what f of negative two is. f of negative two is, so the way that I think about this is that you're at three when you're at x equals negative three. Uh, you're at three and then you move over one, so you move down two thirds because that's the slope of that line. So three minus two thirds gives you seven thirds. That's how I think about that. Um, I'm also gonna need f prime. Oh, sorry, I guess I'm getting g prime. I'm doing them in order. g prime of negative two is the slope of that line segment down one over two, so negative one half. Uh, g of negative two is uh, negative three halves, which you know you can get however you want to get. And then we also need uh, f prime of negative two, which is the slope of that line segment, which is down two over three. Let's sub them in and look at how annoying this is. So 
h prime of negative 4 is going to be, uh, we got 7 thirds times negative 1 half times 2, which actually isn't that bad, plus negative 3 halves times negative 2 thirds, also not that bad, times 1 half. So we actually just end up with negative 7 thirds plus 1 half. It's like negative 14 halves plus negative 14 plus 3 all over 6. So negative 11 over 6. There we go. All right, this next question, I'm not going to make you watch me write them because this question has come up before and you should definitely have these memorized by now, but I think it's good to throw these into problem sets every once in a while um, because you just got to have them memorized. So the derivatives that we have memorized are all of the trig derivatives. And remember, it's like the derivative of sine is cosine, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. The derivative of tangent is secant squared, the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. The derivative of tangent is secant tan, the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant cotan. So there's that co-function thing going on where like you just pick up negatives and change everything to co-functions. Very important to remember all of those, especially as we move forward learning, we're gonna try to like reverse it and go from like secant squared is the derivative of what? Secant squared is the derivative of tangent. So you have to like remember these things. We also know the derivative of natural log is one over x, where x is greater than zero. So people forget to write x is greater than zero. Most of the time when you're doing problems, you leave that out. But when you're just writing down the derivative, you definitely need to say x is greater than zero. And then the derivative of e to the x is the best. It's just e to the x. All right, so make sure you have those memorized. That's the end of this problem set. So I hope this was helpful and good luck.